Hi everybody, it's Toby and we're going on on our project called uh, Rock Vapor Classic. Today it's part number eight and we are talking about the boundary condition, especially the velocity field U. We are going to split the boundary conditions into each field we are using and it's like we will make um, first an incompre incompressible analysis. So we are just, and it's also laminar flow, we are just investigating into the velocity field u and the pressure field p and then if we're going on for example making turbulence uh, modeling we are extending the the fields like k omega and epsilon nu t, nu t and what, what we are uh, need here so that's why we are just limiting right at the beginning for the first simulation u and p today we're just talking about u and then we are going on so in order to keep you uh, interested, we are just going on. We are opening our case file. So it was training case. And what you have to know is if your start open foam applications, it will check out the boundary conditions of, of course, because we, we have our, we need to set up boundary conditions in order to, to close the, the, the system so that we are able to solve the equations and open form commonly commonly checks out the boundary conditions in the file zero i'm just saying commonly because it can also it it depend where open form is looking for the folder and this is i just want to give you the hint in um the control dict here stands that the application starts from start time and then the start time is one. So it would actually check out for a folder one. I just uh, saved it. So I changed it to start time zero now. If you are saying start time 100, it will look for a folder called 100. So just to be aware of that. So we created our zero folder here. And in this zero folder, open foam or the application we are calling will check for specific files. So uh, therefore you need to know the syntax of these files and also the names. So what we are doing actually is we, in order to not mess up the structure of uh, such a file, we just copy an already existing file into our folder and then we modify it in order to fit our needs so we are going to the foam tutorials we go to incompressible to pimple foam so let's shift the path we are going to ras we could also go to laminar it doesn't matter then we can use pits daily pulse we go to zero and you see we have the p and u file here so we select with star, we select these two files and we copy, copy them into the zero folder. So if you check out our zero folder now, we have this P and U file in our zero folder of our projects. I just want to, to give you a better idea. So if you check out how our project looks like now, we have here a zero folder, we have here the P file and the U file. Corresponding to the, to the letters, U is for the velocity, P is for the pressure. So, and now we are going just oh, we open in our, our U file. It is up to you which editor you use. You can use JEdit, for example. Um, I, then you have, you have like this and you can click somewhere inside and, and modify it what you, how you would like to have it. Um, however, I will stay at uh, my Vim editor. So, and, and now, each of these files has specific um, syntax. At the beginning, we have like a command, comments like here. Then we have here like um, the header of the file where we can see, okay, this is a ASCII format. So this is like human readable. It is a volume vector field, which means that for example, here we have to define the fields as a vector. 
uh, there is another field called volume scalar field then it's like a, just a scalar like the pressure the velocity uh, the, the temperature um, turbulent kinetic energy field k omega epsilon and all others actually only the velocity field is a vector field. then we have the internal field here uh, sorry first we have the dimensions the dimensions give the units of the field which is here um, kilogram meter seconds and then it's going kilogram meter seconds what is the third kelvin and the other three are i, th I think some serving with ampere um, but actually not related to common computational fluid dynamics so if you have magnetic fields then these things come come into into yeah consideration these two units so that means we have kilogram unit zero meter is unit multiplied by one we have minus one by seconds would which would mean meter per seconds so the velocity field has um, the units meter per second the internal field means all cell centers in our domain do have a velocity of zero 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 if you say for example 10 zero zero each cell gets like an initialization of x component 10 meters y component zero meters and z component zero meters so here you can give like the initial value for all cells in our domain and then we have here the boundary field i just remove this here um, and inside this boundary field you have to add your boundary conditions now so now the question is what what should i write here so first you have to give it's like the name of the patch then you have like these brackets and inside you have a type then it's the boundary type then you have a value which is commonly something like this or or you specify a value at this boundary face faces so the question now what is the name of the patch and what is the boundary type so the name of the patch is very easy because this is actually the the boundaries we specified during meshing if you don't know which which um yeah which names you specified you can go to constant poly mesh boundary and within this file you see that we have specified three boundary conditions if you are within this uh, tutorial and checking out all the videos um, smoothly you know what i'm talking about so we specified the inlet the outlet and walls these are the names of the boundaries so then it's clear we have here one boundary is inlet outlet but these are just the names it's not um, related to any physical behavior of the, the boundary so then we can close this and actually we do have the same here right so for for the walls for example this is um, a simple thing because the walls you can either fix the velocity fix value and you can say specify the the velocity field at all phases of the wall patch do have the value zero 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 this is similar to no slip i'm going to make an, a, a new video um, an extension to how about the, the boundary conditions you can select but um, i just want to to give you like the idea how to, to set up a boundary field for the velocity here okay and now the question is what do we do with the inlet and what do we do with the outlet so therefore i'm just um i'm just opening part of you so 
that we can talk about the boundary we want to set up. So at the beginning, we want to say something is going in here in the pipe and something is leaving here at the outlet. So as these are the, the boundaries. So we want to have in the blue area an inlet. So something is going into the domain. And here we have an outlet. Something is going out of the domain. So the question now is what is what? So the inlet is the blue one and the outlet is here, this one. So now you can think about um, putting a velocity field here. Um, let's make, um, let's do it in a non-physical way first. So the background, we make it so. So in the inlet, in the blue area, we have like a velocity, a component direction of minus y here, minus y. And the outlet velocity is, is calculated based on how much flux is going here through the pipe and leaving you. So we will set firstly um, a fixed, fixed value here, which is going normal to the to the faces here so in the direction of minus y and we will set accordingly here that please calculate the velocity field here and this is very simple so for the inlet the boundary field is fixed value and we are we say that we have a velocity inlet of i don't know five centimeters in the minus y direction and at the outlet we say zero gradient why zero gradient zero gradient is we don't calculate anything at these faces we just take the cell center value so the cell that corresponds to that face we just say the face value is equal to the cell center value and this is zero gradient um, if you think, for example, if, if your outlet patch is bigger, much bigger, then you can, for example, say, um, I want to have a special treatment based on the pressure distribution. It can happen that somewhere the, the velocity is going back into the domain, something like this. There's a lot of boundary conditions out there, but this is like, how we set up the first simulation. We will do a lot of simulations with this guy and also go to advanced boundary condition, um, especially in the U field, like coded, own coded boundary conditions and these things. So now we are finished. The boundary conditions for the velocity field U are now set. I'm not sure if uh, these, these five centimeters are maybe too high, let's, let's change it to one, one centimeters, which is going in the minus y direction. So this was the velocity field. I hope um, for the moment everything is clear. The next video we are going to the pressure field and then we are setting, finalizing the simulation setup and start our calculation to see some nice colorful pictures and the physics within our geometry. So until now, everything is set. Yes, keep healthy guys, keep filming and see you soon, bye.